Hello, and welcome to Master Life, Book 3, Week 4, Pray in Faith. Let's start with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that the person that is listening today, Lord, that they'll be able to hear what you're saying in your word, Lord, today regarding their prayers to faith in you. I pray, Lord, that you give them such clarity, Lord, where it will plant a seed into their heart, God, and they will be able to apply it to their life, Lord, and it will bring fruit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. So the memory verse for today is 1 John 5, 14 through 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. So today we're going to talk about how do we act according to God's will in order to claim the, the promises of God. God provides daily guidance for you in making decisions, facing problems, and meeting needs. Every day, God is available and waiting when you spend time with him to give you guidance for your life. Even before you pray a prayer, the word of God talks about how he already knows your concerns. And so God wants us to act according to the will that he already has working in our life. Psalms 119, 105 states, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light for my path. God reveals his will through his word to spiritually sensitive, believing Christians who meet his conditions. And see, that's very important about meeting God's conditions. Most of the world, you and I, you know, I've been there too. We ask things according to our desires. And our desires, what we have to think about is they come from how we grow up, what the culture says we should want after, what our five senses have told us will bring our body pleasure, what will bring us joy. We react to what the body says is going to make us joyful and happy. And you got to be you got to be careful with that because God says those who are spiritually sensitive would already know that I have a plan for them and a purpose for their life. And if they dig and try to connect with me spiritually, they will know what that is. And because it's my will, it's going to come. It's going to come to fruition in their life very easily. But you have to know what to ask God for according to his will. Biblical covenants between God and his people had three stages. And we're going to go through these stages because I want you to understand that God wants to bless you. He actually wants you to have a good life. He wants to give you peace, joy, a sound mind. He wants that for his children. He doesn't want children that are suffering. That doesn't show him to be a good father if you're suffering. But God says in order to get his fullness and his blessings, he said there's some things and some requirements you must follow. And they aren't rigid. They aren't super hard. Especially if you're walking in his spirit, you're going to delight in following his commands and covenants. So these covenants between God and his people, they had three stages. First, God revealed his will and he made a promise. He would tell people, if you do this, I will do that. He's very clear in his word to his people. Do this, live your life this way, follow these commands, and this is what I promise I will do in your life and how I will favor you. Stage two is the people met the conditions God established. Now that right there is the part that separates those of us from living out God's full plan and those of us who don't. A lot of us actually know God's plan. We actually know what he requires of us, but we struggle for 10, 15, 20, some people 40 years to get in line and actually do the things that please God and the things he told us to do in order to get the promise. Hit God's people, when he told them to do something to get the outcome that they wanted, they met the conditions he established. And in stage three, the people believed God and received the blessing. And see, that, that means something when, you, when we talk about believing God, that's part of your faith. That you said, God, this is what your word says. By faith, I believe that you are true and you are not a liar, you're not a man that you can lie. So when you said, if I do this, you're going to bless me this way. By faith, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to try you and I'm going to trust in you that you are going to be a God of your word, that what you do, what you said you're going to do, you're going to do it. And so by faith, they walk out and God says, based on their faith in him, based on their faith in him and meeting those conditions by faith, he blessed them. 
So this is how God communicates truth to you. Because a lot of people say, well, Tara, sometimes I'm trying to pray about something and I don't know if it's me praying about it, if it's the will of God, or if it's just my will. This is how you find out if something is the will of God or it's just you praying for a desire that don't necessarily line up with what God wants. Because there are some things you can pray for that sound really, really good. It's not hurting anybody. It's a good thing to ask for. Other people have it. It's not simple. And you say, I think this is what I need to be praying for. And that's perfectly fine. The issue is, is it what God wants for you right then? Is this the time and season in your life in which God will release that thing to you? He may even give you a yes, but the fruition of the yes and it coming into your life may come down the road. So we always have to be in a mode where we are on time with our quest, with our request to God. Meaning, God, I feel like this is what you're requesting of me to ask for in this season. I feel like right now this is what you want for me out of this season. Yes, there are some things I feel in my spirit that you want me to have later on. But what do you want for me right now? So in order to find out the right now things God is trying to bring into your life today, this week, uh, this month, this year, we have to do the first thing, abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. Your greatest concern as a Christian disciple is to find and do God's will. Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is waiting. He's working within you. Some of your desires that you feel is because it is something God wants for you. He put the desire in you. When he's going to bring it to fruition and how he's going to bring it is dependent upon how you work in the seasons and how you move yourself on the path that when he's ready to release it, you'll be available, ready and equipped to receive it. Recognize that God can and will work in your problem for your good and for his glory. You have to believe that he's a good God. You have to believe that he's a good father and wants a good outcome for your life. He wants you to live the very best, the very best outcome of your life. So that means that you have to have faith that his will is already good. Make sure that your fleshly desires are not standing in the way of you discovering God's will. You may say, you know, God, if you just bless me with this, this, and this, God, I know that's going to make me happy. God, trust me. These are the things that are going to make me happy. These are the things I really, 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 really want. You know, like a child, like a toddler. Give me, give me, give me now. This is what I want. And God is saying, I know you want that, but that's not good for you right now. You don't have the maturity to handle that right now. You are not equipped with the capacity that if I give it to you, that you'll actually be able to steward it correctly, that you'll actually be able to hold on to it. You may actually harm yourself or that thing if I release it to you before it's time, before your time. So he may say, hey, hold on. Why are you asking for that right now? Why is that a big desire of, your, of yours? What are you actually trying to fulfill? Because that thing I will answer for you right now, but I'm gonna answer it in my own way. God knows that you desire love, that you desire friendship, that you desire um, security in your finances, security be taken care of, the, the need to feel protected. He knows that. And he said I, he has no problem providing for that for you every day of your life, every second of your life. He just says, make sure that you're allowing me, God, to fulfill it according to his will. Because he knows what you have the capacity to handle in that season. So when we're abiding in God and spending that time, the way that you turn to God when you have questions, when you're not sure of something, you have to abide in his word. John 8, 31, which this was from book one, it says to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. This is what reading the word of God does in helping you to make decisions for your life. Read the Bible systematically and let God speak through pa passages he brings to mind. When God is operating in the Holy Spirit within you and you pray before you read the Bible, he will guide you in a lot of your decisions through a passage. He will give you discernment and clarification and translation of that passage in such a way you will understand, okay, God, that's your will. You're speaking to me in that passage. When you're reading the Bible, look for specific principles and truth that apply to your situation. 
God is very specific on how he feels about a lot of things, especially in how we love others, how we serve, how we put others before us, how we show the fruits of the spirit in everything we do, the self-control, the patience, the kindness, um, the giving. God is very specific in saying, I have an answer. I want you to apply your situation to one of my truths. Look for meaning of the scripture passage to the original readers. You have to read these stories in the Bible. When we have so many testimonies of people in the Bible and the situations they were going through and how they stopped and sought God and the way he answered them. See, God is so strategic in the way he answers things. Even when Jesus, um, the Pharisees would bring questions to him, he was very strategic in telling them parables and stories to get them to understand. I want you to look at this situation. I need you to tell me in the situation what you believe to be true and fair. He wanted people to understand that if you apply God's principles to your situations, the same as these people, you will understand that this is the way I think. God is very consistent in the way that he operates and thinks. He doesn't change it up. His opinions don't change like society's opinions change. When God says, love your enemies, and he says it in the Old Testament, He's going to say it in the New Testament. Love your enemies. When he says that love conquers hate, when he says that he wants his people to live peacefully in the land, to abide peacefully with others, he means that. So any situation you're in and you're saying, Lord, no, I'm justified in behaving this way. I'm justified in making decisions. He's going to say, is it love that you're acting out of? Is that the heart in which you're operating in? Look for present day application of a truth of a, or a biblical situation. God is consistently working in people's lives. The people of the Bible, that was a thousand years ago. That's not when God stopped working in people's lives. Uh, he still works in the lives of people every day. He works in the lives of your grandma, your great grandma, your grandfather, your father, your mother. He is giving you examples of people that when they walk according to his word and his truth, this is the, the, the outcome of their life. You know someone that you can say, I know they follow God and look at their life. Look how they live. And, and I mean, people who, who truthfully walk in God's words and his principles, not people who say I'm a Christian, say I love God, and they don't actually show the spirit of God and the fruit of God in their life. I'm talking about people that you know follow God and you see the fruit. But then you see people that you know don't follow the principles of God. You see the consequences and the fruit of that in their life. He says, look at regular present day situations. How did it work for them? What was the fruit of that thing? So now you're going to try the same thing and expect a different fruit, even though you know this is you not following my principles and you think there'll be a different consequence because it's you. He said, no, I give the same type of fruit to everyone. When you're following my principles, there's the good fruit. When you're not following, I leave you to that. God leaves you to your devices at times when you are consistent about living a life according to your own desires and not according to his principles. A life of disobedience is going to bear its own fruit, a very bad and rotten fruit. And God says, I gave you biblical characters and you see people in present day, everyday life who either follow my commands or don't. Look at them, watch them, study them. And then be willing to look and wait for a word from God um, is the last part of that abiding in the word because you have to be willing to wait. Oh, that's an ugly word. It's an ugly word for me. Wait on God. Wait on an answer. See, anytime you have to make a hasty decision or somebody's telling you, I need a decision from you right now. I need to know what you're going to do right now. You have to say, I have to wait on God. I have to be able to sit in his word wait till he gives me a revelation either through his word or somebody preaching his word through a sermon i have to wait to make sure that what i'm doing will lead me down the path that god has for me god has an expected end for me so i can't just do things and go play over here on this path today and on that path tomorrow when he already has my steps ordered and i should be following this route what you're trying to get me to do, I have to make sure it's according to the will of God for my life because there are some very strategic things he's trying to do, some outcomes I actually want in my life. And if I play over here with you for a while, I won't actually end up on time to receive the things that I want from him. So I don't have time to play. I don't have time to be out of his will. 
I don't have the time to be off of his path. I need to get my expected in. So the next thing, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into truth. This is so important. That's why when reading God's word, you have to ask God first, guide me through your Holy Spirit. Feel me, Father, in your Holy Spirit that I'm hearing the right things when I'm reading your word. And I'm not reading your word, trying to find things to justify what I want to do. Ooh, because a lot of people will do that. They'll say, well, this scripture right here kind of sounds like something good. If I apply it, if I twist it, if I retranslate it, I can fit this to justify what I'm doing. No, you have to use the Holy Spirit to speak within you while you're reading the word of God, because you want to make sure the way you're reading it is applied to your situation and not somebody else's. God wants you to find truth in this word. God reveals his word, but only to those who allow the Holy Spirit to lead them in truth. John 14, 26 says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. The Holy Spirit illuminates, illuminates means to put a light on, to reveal the word for those who seek to know God's word, God's will. The Holy Spirit will shine a light on the passage, the scripture, the word, the part of the sermon that is for you, that is meant to answer that deeply rooted question that you came in with. It, it, it is there. The Holy Spirit is there to tell you. Now, that is the answer from the Father according to what you asked him about. That is your confirmation that you're on the right path. That is your confirmation that you need to leave that alone. And sometimes we'll hear these confirmations over and over. We'll hear the Holy Spirit speaking, but then you must obey. So now when you're asking, make sure in your asking, you say, God, at the end of the day, you know, the heart of what I'm really looking for is security, is protection, is love, is favor. I'm willing to allow you to give me those things according to your will. So God is willing to give us abundantly, but we often, again, fail to ask for the things he wants us to have, the things God wants us to have. He expects us to ask after we discern what his will is for us. See, what we do is we ask first and then say, God, are you okay with that? He said, no, find out what my will is and then only ask that out of your mouth. And see, the, 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 the easy way to make sure that you're not asking for things out of God's will is to say, God, I'm just asking for your will in the situation. I'm not asking for anything specific. I'm not asking for a specific outcome. Thy will be done. That's what Jesus told us to pray when the disciples asked him, how do we pray? He said, ask that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what he said everybody should be asking because his will is perfect. His will is good. And if that's what actually happens in your life, you will have a good outcome. Accept God's will in faith. 1 John 5, 14, 15 again says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He says, I can't hear you when you're asking according to your own uh, wrong motives. When you're asking according to things that I did not tell you you can have, things that I did not state in my word that I would guarantee you. He said, yes, I'll guarantee you love, but I didn't guarantee you a spouse. Oh, I didn't guarantee you children, not to everyone. There are people in the Bible I gave children to, people who prayed for it. I gave it to it. It was in my will. And there are people that I didn't. He said, I don't guarantee things. And the, the relationship that you're actually asking for, you're asking for a specific person. He said, I didn't guarantee you that. I guaranteed you fellowship. I guaranteed you love, confidence, security in me. But be careful when you're asking for stuff from God very specifically. Say, God, what my desire truly is, is that I feel alone. I don't feel love. How can you fix that? And if it be through a spouse, if it be through children, if it be through certain types of friends and family members coming together and reconciling, he'll do that. But you have to say, God, I let this situation go. It's in your hands. It's in your will. If you want me to be in communion and fellowship with those people, you will bring it. But if you want to bring it through another way, through other people, bring them. I'm okay with that. What he won't do is leave you alone. He won't leave you to be by yourself. He will hear you 
And whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. So then now, how do you communicate your faith to God to say, God, I ask for you to intervene according to your will. I believe you're a good father. I hear the confirmation of what you're saying to me in this situation. Now I'm going to communicate my faith to you. How, how do we do that? We act on the basis of God's word to you. Once he's revealed it to you, after you have prayed in faith, you act even when you cannot see the answer to your request. That means when you say, God, I believe that you, um, you, you heard my request for fellowship. You heard my desire not to be alone. I'm going to act in faith by actually going on with my life, waking up every day with your joy, praising you for answering the, the, the prayer already, praising you for being a good father. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go out and serve. I'm not going to sit here and lament on this thing. I'm not going to keep coming to you every day, complaining about it and tell you how sad I am that I don't have it, that it hasn't been brought into my life because that's showing that I don't actually believe you're going to bring it because I know you're going to bring it into my life. I'm going to walk in joy. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to have my focus on the things that you care about. Who can I serve? Who can I help? And, and what you will find out is while you're serving, while you're praying, when you're walking around with joy, with happiness in your heart, it's going to draw people to you. It's going to draw things into your life. It's going to draw opportunities in your life because people see somebody walking around and carrying the light of God. That draws people. God says, if you lift him up, he will draw all men. You have to have the spirit of God. It will actually open the doors that you're trying to open. Because of the faith that you walk in and the joy you walk in every day, people see you, they feel the spirit of God. And he says, now I can release some things to her or him. I can drop some things into them because look at the confidence in which they walk in me. Some of us, our prayers are not getting answered because we're walking around sorrowful and, 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 and complaining and sad. And well, I mean, one day I might get it. See, when you walk like that, why would God release anything to you? Your emotional immaturity is going to keep you from actually handling the blessing. Because what about when you get the blessing and then the blessing involves work? The blessing involves um, grace to be given. The blessing involves you having to handle that person or that child a certain way. But every time you get disappointed, you lament and you complain. God says, if you're not coming to me in faith and joy when you don't have it, that means when you get it and it involves some work, you're not going to come to me in faith and joy and prayer then. You're going to complain then about the blessing. Do you understand? You're going to complain. If you cannot get through the season in which you don't have it and have joy, when you get it and, and it doesn't bring you joy every day, you're not going to walk in joy. So God needs to see your, your posture, your posture of praise and gratitude and faithfulness before the blessing. So once your faith is God, God grounded in truth, faith involves having absolute confidence in something without physical evidence. Hebrews 11 and 1 states, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith pleases God because it shows that we trust his promises even when they seem to be impossible. And in your own strength, the thing that you really want, the thing that really will bring you joy, it is impossible in your own strength. See, the very thing about it, the things that you would ask for specifically, see, that's why you got to be careful about what you're asking for when you're asking for a very specific thing. God says he is willing to do exceedingly and abundantly all or more than you could act or imagine according to his riches and what, according to what he is able to do and God is able to do anything, the impossible. So he says, if you could actually ask for it, that's not what I'm trying to give you. Because when God gives you something, he wants no explanation that it, that it didn't come from anybody but him. He said, you won't be able to explain it away and give credit to anybody or anything or even to yourself. You're going to know that this is from me. Because when God blesses us, he blesses us with something that you will turn into a testimony that will increase not only your faith, but somebody else. He wants to give you something that makes you say, God is real. God is real. I know he's real because I had a real experience from him. I had an experience that let me know, no, this could not have been through any other way but him. And then that is the type of faith and the testimony that you're going to go out and tell somebody, oh, no, have faith. Have faith, believe, 
believe because I have seen him for myself. See, when Jesus healed people, when he brought miracles in people's life, the first thing he said is go tell somebody. Because he said, if you go tell them, they know the circumstance you were in. They saw that. They saw your suffering. They saw the lack. But now you're telling them where it came from. That is going to increase their faith in God. Even when people said, Jesus, you, you heal me. I want to walk with you. I want to be one of your disciples. He said, no, you're actually more beneficial to me if you go now and minister about the testimony of who I am and who God is. He said, that's actually more beneficial. To go back to the people that saw you every day, that know your story and know that there is no way that you would have been released from this, healed from this, given this opportunity if it wasn't from God. I need you to be around those people and tell them about me. So I, I want to encourage you today because I know there are a lot of people, especially in the season that we're in, as I'm taping this, uh, America is going through a pandemic <laughs> right now. And, and this is this is December that I'm taping this right now happy holidays <laughs> but right now a lot of people are looking for the impossible their situations look very bleak and they're asking and wanting some specific things god i need a job well god is saying you're praying for a job but i can actually give you a business if you sit with me abide in me i actually want to show you that you have gifts and talents within you and actually i let this season happen where you don't have a job so that i can reveal to you that you have money making potential within you there's something you could be doing in this season that you could speak out of your mouth create something write a book you're asking for a job that's limited I know to you that feels secure because it's a secure check. You're going to go. They're going to give you the check on Friday. That's how you've always operated. But he says, I have trained you through all those jobs to now work a business or a ministry or do some consulting. But I need you to sit so we can plan this out and I can show you how I have already lined up the path for you. See, God is about bigger, greater things than what you're asking for. But I want you to end this season, connect with him, reach out to him and pray in faith. I hope you have enjoyed the session today. I hope you um, have gained something from, from this lesson, knowing that God is a good God. If you don't remember anything, he's a good God that loves you. He loves you beyond what you could have planned for your life. When he set you in the earth, he already had a plan. The problem is most of us don't stop long enough to say, God, what would you have done with my life? Had I actually, before I start planning out school and college and marriage and children, what would you have planned for me? What would you have done? How could you have orchestrated a better joy in my life and peace than what I have? Because I'm trying to maintain what I came up with. But God, what would you have done with, with me? Had I asked you instead, before I applied for those things, before I applied for those jobs, all of those things that I have been running around, going, starting, ending, starting, ending. If I had just sat with you, what was your plan for me? I am a testament of that. When I stopped and I said, God, get me off the hamster wheel. Get me off all of those things. I had the, the house, the car, the nice job, all of that. I, I, you know, I, I have the children, I have the husband and I was juggling them and trying to hold them all up. And God says, actually, you're holding more than I asked you to hold. You're holding more than I have asked you to hold. And so he said, I can actually pull some of that off of you and actually still give you the same benefits of joy, security and all the things that you want. But it doesn't take that much work. But you're trying to hold it and do it all on your own. And I'm telling you, stop, stop. God does not wear you out. He doesn't cause you to have high blood pressure and, and hypertension and anxiety and worry with your promises. The promises of God brings no sorrow. They bring no sorrow. So get in contact with the master today and say, God, what is your plan for my life? Help me to get on the right path and work that path every day and be guided by your Holy Spirit. I want you all to have a marvelous day. Take care.